Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unbox and Reviews and How To, and on today's video we're taking a look at the MSI Z790 Project Zero motherboard from MSI, and also how easily it fits into the Thermaltake Series 330. Uh, we've seen this case on the channel a couple of times already, and as the new boards are coming out with the back to front, or Project Zero star wiring, we'll be going through and highlighting some of the convenience factors that you can get when actually building in these types of cases. Now, at the moment on the market, there's actually very limited cases which actually support the back to front or the Project Zero case. And of the ones that are officially supported by MSI, the Series 330 currently is actually the one which is available in the most colors. So if you want different colors, maybe black, white, or others, which are available. And potentially it is the cheapest as well. Certainly here in the UK it is at the time of filming. You can pick this up for somewhere in the region of about 90 pounds, so 89.99. And generally that comes with free shipping from scan.co.uk. I'll put some links in the description so you can check out prices near you and also some alternative ones for Amazon and also global links. So for those of you that are watching it overseas, you may want to pick up one of these cases. And something which we should stress, which I have said in previous videos, but just in case this is the first time you're seeing this case, don't worry. If you want to use this case, but you've just got a regular style ATX or micro ATX motherboard, it's absolutely fine. You don't have to use a Project Zero or ASUS BTF type board in here but it does support it should you wish to. So if you're maybe planning a build and you've just got some regular ATX motherboard at the moment, this is gonna be great. And as more motherboards come out in the future from ASUS, MSI, and potentially others, this case is gonna be ready for it. Also, I should mention that majority of the parts actually in this build today have been sent over by both MSI and Thermaltake. So we'll quickly introduce some of the parts. So obviously you've seen the case already. This is the Series 330 the snow edition. Motherboard wise, we've got the MSI Z790 Project Zero. Now, obviously what makes this board pretty special and significant is the fact that the wiring, predominantly all of it, is done on the back of the motherboard. So this means much, much easier access to all of those cables and pins and fiddly bits, which we often struggle with, especially those ones down at the bottom, such as the front IO, those USB ports and RGB ports, all that kind of good stuff. Now, for those of you that are wondering, at the time of filming, I looked up this motherboard to see how expensive it is in comparison with other premium Z790 motherboards. And actually, the price is very, very similar. Obviously, considering all the changes in the production and all that kind of stuff, you'd expect it to have a somewhat premium price. And also, you're probably expecting that they're not going to sell in the huge numbers because it is somewhat of a niche product, but the price isn't actually too bad. And in the UK at the moment, somewhere around about the £270 mark, which for a premium rated Z790 motherboard, it's actually pretty reasonable. Another key component of this build is actually the graphics card. So again, this has been provided by MSI on loan. So this is the MSI RTX 4070 Super, the Gaming X Slim Edition. You've actually probably seen this before on the channel. Well, not this exact one. Previously, we reviewed the white model, which actually I went out and bought myself, I have my own money after, really impressed with this card, and in this one, we've actually got the black version. But I think actually, in this kind of monochrome setup, we've got predominantly white, and also we've got some highlights of black in there. I think it looks really nice. Now, the processor in here is a very minuscule processor, so I've only got a 12th gen processor, but it doesn't matter. You can use 12th, 13th, and 14th gen processors on this Project Zero motherboard. I've opted just to go with the 12400, just for testing purposes, just to see how it all goes. And in order to cool this beast, we've got the Thermaltake Tough Liquid 280 EX Pro ARGB Sync. And with this, this particular cooler is a water cooler, 280 mil, but it also has a little bit of RGB actually on the pump head, which ties in nicely with the rest of our system. It fully supports MSI's Mystic Light using that five volt, three pin addressable RGB header. And of course, if you wanted to use it with other motherboards, that's absolutely fine. And the RAM in the system is the Thermaltake Tough RAM XG RGB D5, which I think looks absolutely great. This is a DDR5 6,000 mega transfers per second, 32 gigabyte kit. And again, for all of this stuff, we'll put links in the video description. Now we didn't need to add any fans to this. And in fact, I've actually removed one. There was a plain white fan at the back of the Series 330, which comes with the case itself. So you can choose to leave it in there if you want to. I thought it looked a little bit bland and was actually pulling some of the air away from the radiator. So I've taken that out of the back. And actually a cool trick of this with the Series 330, technically it only supports up to a 280 mil AIO. If you want to go for a 360, if you remove the fan from the back, you can actually squeeze a 360 in there. So if you're looking at this and thinking, I really like it, but I want to put a 360 in there, you can do, you just have to negate that rear fan. 
The other two fans in the system are both the CT140s, ARGB versions, they come included with the case at the £90 price currently here in the UK, so I think it's actually a pretty decent bargain. And to go ahead and power all of this, we have got the Thermaltake Tough Power GF a3 1050 watt this is a pci express gen 5 power supply as you can probably guess from the 12 plus 4 connection going into our nvidia graphics card this is a great power supply relatively inexpensive a slightly cut down version of the gf3 which is extremely popular but still comes with that great 10-year warranty so that's the parts introduced let's talk about the build actually again if you've seen the previous videos it's very very straightforward the motherboard fits in extremely easily just get your pins ready your pillars, nine of them for the Project Zero, put the board in, put the screws in. And for this side of it, that's kind of it. There isn't a great deal else you have to do for the motherboard. You can, of course, if you want to, install your M.2 drives and slotting the graphics card in is an absolute piece of cake. Lots of easy access there. And best of all, no wires to really kind of fiddle around with and move out of the way. So that's pretty straightforward. Attaching the cooler, very easy to do as well. Fits very easily. And Thermaltake have done a great job with the fitting kit on this. Very nice and easy to do on this LGA 1700 motherboard. So actually in the front where you pretty much see everything, it looks extremely clean and tidy. And actually in the back, it's pretty much the same story. Now granted, we haven't got a huge amount of fans in here. There is one missing, but that hasn't really taken much away from the wiring. But as you can see, it looks very clean and very slick and lots of easy access should you want to do anything to the system. Now, of course, the key thing about the whole Project Zero is the fact that all the wiring is done from the back. There are one or two small things on the other side, such as like a clear CMOS or something. But essentially, everything you need access to is in the back here, which makes it really, really convenient, especially when you're swapping out parts, adding in fans, addressable RGB, maybe expanding your system with some more USB devices, that kind of stuff. And even if you're going into Thermaltake's own RGB ecosystem where you have to plug in the USB 2s on the bottom again very easy to access and you can hide everything in here really nicely even with the cables which are kind of rear facing and sticking out none of these have actually obstructed the ability to put the rear case on so you put it on it's very fine you don't have to kind of stuff your wires in like a suitcase it works very well most of that I think is in fact the way it's been designed and also you've got these loops here with velcro so you can tidy everything up really nicely Let's take a look actually at the all connections so you can get an idea of what goes where. So we'll start at the top and you'll probably be seeing this in the kind of the naked form and also with it being wired. So at the top here, we've got our dual EPS connections. So those are your extra power connections for your motherboard, for your CPU. Again, those are an absolute pain to get to when they're on the other side of the board because you've got things in the way such as possibly your AIO cooler or just the heat sinks from the motherboard itself. With this back to front or Project Zero design, this is very, very easy to access. Likewise, if you're using a regular ATX motherboard, you've still got this really nice opening at the top there, so passing those cables through is extremely easy to do. So moving along from there, we've got our addressable RGB, which actually is daisy-chained into the cooler, so that's all just tie-wrapped up here. So really nice and simple. You've got wires hanging everywhere, so that's really nice to do. At the top here, you've got the connections for your CPU fan. In this case, it's for our AIO. Then you've got your water pump header and also the system fan header. So all three of those connect up in there nicely. Job done. Moving across, we've got our 24 pin main power connector. Again, if you're using just a normal ATX motherboard, this is absolutely fine because you do have the rubber grommets on the side there so you can pass those through as you would do normally. But with this, with Project Zero, it's all hidden away. So we've got that tucked in there. We've got our USB type C front panel header there connected up, no problems at all. And underneath, should you want to use a bunch of SATA drives, you've got easy access to all of your SATA cables there and also other areas of the motherboard should you need to. When it comes to the piece de resistance, that is the front panel IO wiring at the bottom here. This is so ridiculously easy. It actually is child's play. Anyone can do it. Even if you're someone who suffers with dexterity, very easy to get access to. And more importantly, if you are somewhat visually impaired, it's actually really easy to read what's on the motherboard to see what goes where. So starting on the far side, we've got a solid single block for our front panel connector. So that's gonna be your power switch, reset button, and your LEDs for your hard drive and also power. So that is on a single block. So that just plugs in, very easy to do. Considerably less fiddly than if you have those individual ones. Moving along, you've got some more SATAs there and also fan headers, which are easily accessible. We've got our USB 3.0 Type-A's, 
two of them going into there again nice and easy and even with it sticking out as far as it does it still doesn't impede on the side panel so that's really good you've also got your other front panel connections there more fan headers if you want to use them more addressable rgbs and finally at the end there you've got your front panel audio again that one is one which is quite often really hard to get to sometimes you can't put it through because your power supply is too close to the chassis or because of where it is on the motherboard on the other side it's right down in that corner very fiddly to get to generally you end up getting out either a magnifying glass or a torch or a combination of the two and of course finally at the bottom we've got our power supply and because all of our connections are on here very easy to slide your power supply in and out so if you want to do a swap maybe swap out your gold power supply for a platinum or whatever upgrade it very easy to do all the access is there and of course when it comes to rewiring your power supply you don't have to worry too much about this side at all just pull it out from the side disconnect your power plugs put in the new one and you're good to go so there you go there is a tour of the series 330 using the msi z790 project zero motherboard and a few other choice components from both msi and thermal take and i gotta say it's actually been a real pleasure doing this it, it genuinely has Sometimes PC builds, when you're just doing it for a review and it's not yours to actually keep long term, it's a little bit frustrating because you're fiddling around trying to get it all to look nice, worrying about camera angles and that kind of stuff. But with this actually, it's very, very simple and it does relieve a lot of the stress and tension. And I think specifically for people who are maybe doing their first computer build and they've gone in for something slightly high end, if you get any of these components, they're going to work really nicely together and it's going to make your life considerably easier. But... On the flip side, we will talk about some of the things which make this actually a little bit of a negative experience. Now, firstly, this is down to the motherboard manufacturers. Thermal Take have done basically all they can do. They've got full compatibility with ATX, Micro ATX, and also the back to front designs from ASUS and MSI. But unfortunately, the motherboard manufacturers seem to be dragging their heels a little bit, and we're not seeing a massive amount of these boards on the market, especially the ones towards the middle of the pack those kind of mid-range boards between 150 and maybe 200 pounds, which seems to be pretty much the sweet spot for a lot of buyers. My personal opinion at the moment, being that most of the boards on the market do seem to be aimed at Intel, it's one of those things where the LGA 1700 socket is basically coming towards its end of its life. We will be getting a new Intel socket towards the middle or end of this year. So you are actually investing a considerable amount of money in a platform which effectively is coming to an end. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what comes out from MSI and ASUS in cooperation with our friends over at Thermaltake to see what comes out on the AM5 platform. I think that is going to be the really exciting one to be looking at. But anyway, that's my opinion on it. Let me know what you think about this in the comments section below. And again, as always, if you've got any comments or questions regarding the Series 330, whether it be back to front or normal ATX, or any of the components you see in this, please do reach out to us on our Discord. It's completely free of charge to join. Or alternatively, if you want to, you can just leave a comment in that comment section below. And if you're feeling like it, leave a like. It always helps the channel. And if you want to see more content on this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. And that way you'll get all of our videos in your inbox. So I think that's going to wrap this one up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.